What's good, people? It's Ego Surf coming back at you with another. Stay organized. I'm gonna keep my vlogs in terms of seasons. So season zero is just like the first nine vlogs because I had no idea what I was doing. Then we have season one, which is kind of like 11 through 19. So I guess this is officially season two. And you can see how I've separated these using playlists on my channel. As per usual, I feel like it's not a vlog update unless I've gotten a significant piece of gear that's changed my workflow. And I've also completely rearranged my bedroom since I do spend like 80% of my time working working in here. I kind of have to change it up quite a lot. It just gets so boring to consistently use the same setup. Now, the last setup I had, I feel like I really, really didn't use it like at all. I think I made like two videos with it. I had the wall of foam set up and it was really cool, but it took a lot of effort to really set up that whole studio and I wasn't really enjoying it because of how much work was required to get started. Also, now that I've taken down that foam, like I've become very aware of all the little like reflections and noises in my room. So if like something's humming, like a fan or something's running, like I can hear it in every direction. And I just feel like this room is echoing and, and has so much reverb now, even though it's really not that big of a room. I don't know, I've just become spoiled to like the dead sound of having all, like an entire wall of foam. Definitely something that I miss. I enjoy the cleanliness and the vibe of my room now every morning that I wake up because I did another like obnoxious spring cleaning where I got rid of like half of all of my possessions. Since I did that, everything's a lot more minimalistic and it's just chill and it's calm and it's relaxing. And it's nice to have like empty space. And I removed like the box spring and the frame from my bed. So my whole room just feels like bigger. Uh, because I removed the foam, I decided to just quickly paint the walls white to give it a little bit more light in the room, makes it look a little bit more clean. Then the, the cream just looked dirty in my opinion. The foam, I decided to make these like little two by two uh, structures here rather than having um, like an entire wall. I just did the little two by twos. I tried to do a three by three, but it was too heavy to hang because I'm attaching it to poster board and then attaching the poster board to the wall. So this way it's non-destructive and the foam is a lot more durable and it hasn't fallen once, thankfully, but uh, yeah, the, the three by threes were just too heavy, so we're sticking with the two by twos for now. The main reason why I was able to do this was because, shocker, I got a new piece of gear. <laughs> I got the brand new 2020 M1 MacBook Pro, and it's allowed me to be mobile again. Like, before, I was tethered to the wall because my old laptop had broke. I damaged the screen, so then I never took it out of the house, and it was always plugged in. And because it was always plugged in, the battery started to go. So now the battery's like bulging out of the laptop, and the screen's damaged. So yeah, it really wasn't a good setup. Constantly had to be at home in order to use my Mac, uh, which also meant that I needed an external monitor, an external keyboard, external mouse, like all of this stuff. Like it just became a serious hassle just to even turn my computer on. So I went and got the new computer, and now because of that, it's like this all in one little mini package of a workstation, and it just feels so great to have a laptop again. I cannot express that enough. And I got this super awesome, super powerful anchor charger here, this portable charger. A lot of uh, the portable chargers will let you charge it with USB-C, but this allows like power output through USB-C, which means I can just USB-C from the anchor portable charger directly to the MacBook and it will charge it. Now, disclaimer, it does not charge it if the MacBook is dead. It takes a long time to turn the MacBook on. It needs to get like a consistent amount of energy or a large amount of charge or whatever in order for it to turn on. But that actually like never happens now because I can literally just put my, my computer in my bag and put the portable charger in my bag and plug them up together and set them in my car. And by the time I get to a destination, the laptop's charged, so that's a huge perk. On top of it, I also have Verizon Unlimited and mobile hotspot, so I essentially have this mobile power station where I can do all of my work wherever I want. Like, this is a crazy new feel. It's, 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 un, it's unlike anything I've had before. Like, I'm super grateful for this. 
moving on. I've been rereading The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. If you haven't checked that out, you should check that out in the description. Um, and, and honestly, like that, the chapter 2, Elimination, it's really, really been like hitting me hard lately where I'm really trying to clean everything up and make everything as fluent as possible because I tried automating and it really wasn't working as well as it should have because everything really wasn't clean to begin with. So I'm trying to really get this nice fluent style of, of work and life and, and this balance between the two and, and just make everything fall into place and then delegate you know, and make everything a lot easier. Strangely enough, another big one was I downgraded my wardrobe, went to bulk apparel and just bought a bunch of like the same t-shirts in different colors and the same hoodies and just keeping it simple. You know, it's saved a lot of time, surprisingly. It's like the, the Steve, the classic Steve Jobs uniform. Uh, you know, you, you have more important things to focus on when you don't have to worry about the little things like that, like keeping everything clean is a lot easier when you don't have a lot of things that keep things dirty, you know? With that being said, the hardest thing for me to get rid of is gear and equipment because I just keep getting more. But I've been trying to make it so that if I get another piece of gear, it has to replace a piece of gear that I already owned. Um, or it's more like a two for one deal where if I get one piece of gear, it has to replace two things I owned before. So yeah, I got the new MacBook, but now I don't have an external monitor, an external keyboard, the USB hub that connected all of the devices together. Like I got rid of all of that. I don't need it anymore. It's unnecessary. Now all I have really is the computer computer, an external mouse, and then like an interface when I use the interface anyway. This entire vlog so far has been done, aside from the drone footage in the beginning, but it's been done with the kit lens and the Rode microphone. Nothing's really been overly complicated where typically when I'm doing like studio work I'm using the Shure SM7B with the fat head and the Scarlett and then I gotta plug it up to the computer and that's gotta record the audio and then I have to sync it up in post. This is already synced before I even export it from the camera. It's already synced ready to go. So there's a huge perk with that. And even still, like I said, I'm using the kit lens so I'm trying to keep it simple. Like yeah, I bought a $700 Sigma lens for studio videos and I will still be using it but I wanted to prove the point both to myself and my future self and anyone watching that it really doesn't take the expensive equipment to get started and I'm still just getting started this is still all the beginning stages of the vlog and of YouTube as a whole for what I want it to be at least with that said I really have been spending most of my time working on a project that I've literally told two people so sorry but you're not gonna know about that just yet probably by the next vlog update you'll know what I'm talking about because it's almost done and music. I've been really spending a lot of time focusing on Spotify and just trying to grow my own Spotify and get that moving and just kind of get it to the next level so that it's a little bit more automated like I was talking about and just clean everything up and you know just have this fluent lifestyle where everything just is it does what it's supposed to do. You know, I don't know how to explain it better than that. And when I say focus on the music, I also mean the sample packs. So a lot of the sample packs are finally out. They're finally in my store. Completely redid my store. I don't know about you, but I think it looks a lot nicer. I think it looks so much cleaner and everything's just more professional, more organized. I'm also offering a 25 free drum loop sample pack that you can download right here. Um, they also updated the little cards. They look different now. But that is really the majority of the, the update here. There's nothing too crazy that's been going on. Uh, you know, everything's really been the same for the last year. So it, it kind of sucks, but it's kind of awesome too because I feel like this year was a lot about like self-reflection. Like I got to do a lot of self-improvement. So I can't really show you some of the things that I've done and I can't really like explain to you some of the progress that I've gone through. But a lot of things have changed in the last year and it makes me really excited to see what not only just the summer is going to bring, but what this whole next year is going to look like. I'm really pumped. So stay tuned and if you haven't yet please like and subscribe it really helps out the channel thanks for watching guys Peace.